Greetings bleepers, how the devil are you? A spade is just a spade. Well, that's what I thought until I used this thing. This is the Migrafta. Migrafta, Migrafta, Migrafta. Migra I keep thinking it says Megagrafta, but it doesn't. Uh, graft, grafta, graft um, is kind of like a, a old English terminology for work, if you didn't know that, if you're from um, another part of the world and, and didn't kind of like know what that meant. Graft equals work. So, so this basically means my worker. This is your worker. This was created by a man called Paul, who's um, a Yorkshireman, uh, who suffered a back injury, unfortunately, and couldn't find a spade that fit his needs. Um, so he went about designing this thing, which fit his needs and also fit my needs. I didn't know that this was gonna fit my needs, but it does. Pointers, right? You don't think that you need a pointer when you're metal detecting. Um, you just you just don't. You think I'm going to dig a holes and then I'm going to find a thing. My metal detector uh, will, will do that for me. And then you somehow get hold of a pointer or you use a pointer. Um, and after about five times, you're kind of you know you're, you're, you're proficient in using the pointer. But if you stop using a pointer from that point on, uh, you really really notice not having a pointer. Right? It's um, something that happens to all of us. I'd say after about five hunts. It's the same with this thing here. I didn't know I needed it until I had it. I can't imagine using any other spade. In fact, I really don't want to use any other spade from this point on. This is perfection. And there's a kind of like a philosophy that surrounds this as well, which has got nothing to do with Paul. It's, it's more to do with how I perceive this spade. Um, we'll talk about the spade in a second, what I like about it, but I just want to quickly mention that this is created by a one-man team in a shed in, in Yorkshire. Um, this guy created something that he felt suited his needs and, and would like, you know, and suit other people's needs. Um, he firmly believed in his, his idea and went ahead and did it. And I think in this day and age, that should be applauded, especially in this day and age where, uh, you know, Britain, Australia, Canada, America, loads of European countries, Germany, you know, the Dutch are trying to pull back industry and, in, you know, and, and integrity and ingenuity um, in their industries, trying to alleviate the uh, copy and paste products <laughs> that we um, and component parts that we outsource to China. This is made by a one man team and I think that that should be applauded. Now, all of my family are from up north from where Paul hails, um, up in Yorkshire. I'm, I'm a Yorkshireman by proxy actually. Uh, my granddad, after World War II, come down south, he's a Yorkshireman, uh, well he was a Yorkshireman, come down south and my dad just decided to stay down south. So literally all of my clan are northerners and I'm literally the only one left down here now in the south. And I understand and appreciate the, the work ethic and the ethics of um, that part of the world. And that kind of soul almost seeps into this product as far as I'm concerned. It's ridiculously hard, but the engineering on it is perfect. Um, that's probably what I'm trying to say in a nutshell here. You see, now this is um, carbon fiber. The stem itself is carbon fiber and it's telescopic. Like, so I'm six foot tall on the dot. And if I push it to its highest, like this is like how Millie likes his um, spades. It's because he doesn't have to bend so much. So at its highest peak, at its highest point there, um, it comes up to my belly button on the six foot tall. So there's no, I don't know if you can see, but there's no real kind of needing to bend over and put my, put my back into it too much. And because of the carbon fiber, it is ridiculously light. I, it's just so light, it's like a feather. It's so strange because you feel like when you're digging in, you feel like you're going to bend it and it's going to snap. If you're in really hard ground, you're going to bend it and it's going to snap. Um, but it just doesn't. This stuff is so tough. It just doesn't break. It just doesn't break. So this is obviously painted. It's a stainless steel, I believe. What I really like, I had to take out a small tree um, a friend's small tree and I love these serrated edges here so I could be able to cut through the roots and then dig and then cut through the root and dig. Now if you are interested in woods metal detecting then that's going to be perfect for you. One thing I don't appreciate about uh, woods metal detecting is roots. 
this solves that. Cut, 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 dig, cut, 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 dig. It has these stands. Some people don't appreciate the stands. I really appreciate the stands. Uh, what I, if you look at the bends of that as well, if you're if you don't have that bend and you have stands it's you do have a chance of kind of like slipping and injuring yourself um what i most appreciate about these it's got these like vel tough velcro bits here but also if you use a conventional spade that you buy from a garden center for example um the corners of those spades are they tend to be quite sharp so I've lost about three or four pairs of boots just by constantly digging down and the corners digging up into my boot that's not going to happen here and it's just the going back to like the engineering of it as well it's very strange because you put your foot down like that and it's just I don't put any effort into the blooming thing it's, it digs itself almost it's a very very strange experience for a spade um, but going down to its shortest it goes down to, I would say, again, I'm six foot, so it just goes up above my crown jewels. All right, so it's just above there. Um, and of course, you can split this into two parts if you are on the move. Let's just quickly do that. There you go, just like that. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I can show you videos of me digging with it, but I'm digging. You can't really get that point across on camera. Um, you know, you can only experience that your, your, yourself. This is nice and sharp. Um, again, it's just it's just absolute perfection, and I can't imagine using anything else. And I kind of like rude a day that I might have to. Although I, I can't imagine that this is going to go any anywhere anytime soon. And if you weigh it up as well, uh, like price-wise, I think that if you pay 20, 30 quid for a garden spade from a garden centre, you know you're going to get about six months to a year out of that, I think. And they snap. Well, they do for me anyway because I really give things some wearly. Um, this is a long-term thing which is going to last you I don't know how many years but it's going to last you a, you know a fair while so the price weighs itself up you pay for a good product um, and that's going to that's going to stand you you'd hope that it would stand the test of time so there you go the migrafter spades again just it's the soul and the idea of this a, a one-man team um, crafted by his own hand um, put a lot of effort and thought into the engineering of the spade and it's a thing that should be applauded in this uh, time of mass commercialization and uh, outsourcing I think personally well done Paul you should be proud of yourself thank you for watching my friends and I shall see you in the next video